Hello friends, it's Reza. Welcome to channel Reza Blade. Today I'm here uh, by popular demand with a tutorial. Usually each week I release a uh, plate review video or polish review video with some inspiration manis for you guys to see and I kind of tell you how I did them but I don't necessarily do them on camera or give you step by steps. Uh, and it's been a while since I did a tutorial, so I, again, have been asked to do one. And this particular design is one of my favorite in a while. It's very versatile. I've created a fall design for you today. and uh, But you can really adapt it for kind of any season. I'll show you what I mean in a little bit. Uh, first, I want to say that you, uh, the example that I had up for you if you saw the opening image is uh, a little bit long for the tutorial. I don't really like to do tutorials with nails on that are that long. So I have created some different colorways for you. This one is, as you can see, mustard and like a spruce or a pine. Maybe it's not blue enough to be a spruce, but you know what I mean. And the other one you will have seen on my Instagram and that Instagram link is below um, in the description box if you'd like to check out my Instagram. I uh, produce lots of inspiration manis and um, in information on new polishes coming out. Um, so I have the colors that I did the original long mani and these are extra sizes for me so I don't waste my quote unquote good ones. There are three different techniques that I use for this tutorial, for this manicure. So I will timestamp them in the description box below. I'll, I'll put the plate numbers that I used or I had on access, had on easy, uh, I guess, standby to use if I wanted the leaves off of those plates. Um, I'll put all that information in the description box below. But uh, if you're just here for the ride, strap in and here I'm going to go with the tutorial. First I'm going to talk about the gradient that I did and how to do that. Then I'm going to talk about selective stamping and how to do that. And then I'm going to talk about reverse stamping. And I might get the order mixed up just a little bit, maybe going back and forth a little bit, but again uh, timestamps will be below. So let's get started. First things first, I'm going to talk about the gradient that I did here. These were about three coats each. The inspiration polishes for this particular colorway, the original colorway of the manicure, well, the whole manicure really was inspired by Graceful's, Graceful Polishes Autumn Prugly's collection that came out in this fall, fall of 2020. Uh, you'll see I already have a distinct fill line. I actually just ordered a replacement for this polish. It's called Pumpkin or Another. It's uh, you know, I'm not a real fan generally of uh, uh, autumn colors. I'm a winter myself. I like jewel tones, but you know what? This I've, I've really used the heck out of this polish. I love it. And this one is called Garnet Wine, and it's a nice dark garnet color for the fall. And uh, you can see that the top is the pumpkin. The bottom is the garnet. That is achieved by doing enough coats of the pumpkin to make it opaque. I think that was two or th three, two, maybe two. And then this one I'm leaving blank. So what I actually am gonna do for you right now, showing you how I do my gradients, is I'm gonna pull these two colors from this manicure over here, and that's China Glaze's Mustard the Courage. And uh, what is this one called? Leaf. Maybe by Sally Hansen, Miracle Gel. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you, a lot of people use makeup wedges and I'll show you what those look like here. I found that I have to use about twice the polish that I need to use if I use one of these more open cell kind of stamps. So this one, you'll see, these are a little more expensive. I'll try to get the link for you that I bought this set on. But these you can get in bulk. Certain and, and on Amazon I just ordered a new set in bulk. So that's pretty awesome. That comes with the handle and the packet. And um, 
This one is the one I'm going to use for you today. It's kind of my favorite. Butometry actually is the site that introduced me to this kind of um, sponge for gradients. So first thing is I'm going to loosen these so that they're ready for me to do multiple coats. So on the top, now you'll notice that I've done the lighter color. You can just do a base of white, which is what I normally do, because I normally do like a gradient with a minimum of three colors. But this is just a double gradient, so go ahead and do it in the lighter color, and then that way you're just reinforcing the lighter color when you stamp that on. So you don't need to do quite as much as I would normally do if I'm sponging a gradient on. And this color is pretty dark, so again, you don't have to really overdo the coats. Remember, we're going to do, it's preferable on a gradient to do multiple light coats as opposed to fewer heavy coats. Because if you keep going at that gradient with your sponging, you're actually, but you know, without breaks, you're going to actually pull color off instead of putting it on. So you just want to keep it to a minimum. So I'm going to guide that with my hand and kind of sponge. I'm, I'm moving the line around just minimally so that I have a, a gradient as opposed to just a two color scheme. If you know what I mean there, that's, that's how you get that foggy, smushy line in between. So I'm going to go ahead and apply some more polish and the application of polish is what gives us our time for that first thin coat of sponge on polish to dry. So while it's drying and we're applying polish, that gives us the time that we need for us not to be pulling up that polish. We're just gonna be laying it down now. So this is probably the last time I'm gonna sponge so that I don't make this video any longer than I have to. So that's how you do that. Once you have reached an opaqueness that you're pretty happy with, go ahead and use your top coat, whatever you do. I use a, I always use a quick dry top coat. Um, and right now what I'm using is Sesh Feet. I really like Vibrant v Vinyl's Fast and Hard top coat, but the Sesh Feet I can get in huge quantities from Amazon. Now, while I'm sponging this, while I'm sponging, while I'm applying my top coat, just want to say if you're enjoying this tutorial, please give me a thumbs up for the like button. That helps me out. Also, I'd love to hear what you think in, your com in the comments below. Anything more that you would like to see from me, maybe your favorite colorway of this particular manicure. So that is how we sponged on our gradient. The next step of this manicure, we're going to go ahead and deal with the chandelier stamp. This particular, it's its really on trend for the past year or two. This particular chandelier stamp that I used for this design is from Mezardu. It's their plate number C68. I got this in a 10 pack, I believe. And the ones I have selected are just the more um, uh, simple chandeliers as opposed to the ornate ones. So we're gonna use this one for the middle finger since it's larger. And then we're going to use this one, ooh, this one for the ring finger, since it's a little bit thinner, at least on me. And for each one of these, because we're going to put a reverse stamp leaf on, we're going to go ahead and pull off with scotch tape that little um, last little pendant head. So let me show you what I'm up to. By Now you want to choose your color for stamping carefully because you want it to stand out well enough to be visible in from both of these colors. So I'm going to go ahead and use a really, really bright gold. This is a very common gold that stamping polish makers make. This one's You Are Sugar, but Born Pretty makes the same gold. Z Joy makes the same gold, etc., etc. So just a little bit of polish there. Grab a speak scraper and whoo! Well, that's how I roll. Okay, so that that didn't work out because 
you're not really supposed to drop your stamp. Okay, so what I'm going to do so I don't screw up my Manny is I'm going to clean off the stamping plate so I can try again with some acetone. I know that they make special tools for this, but I lost mine. So I've just moved to a clothespin. There we go. <laughs> Let's reset, go back to back to zero on our start. And I will make that happen. I'm actually gonna grab this one here. <laughs> you guys, they just can't. And that is that. So selective stamping to me means that I'm just gonna pull this off and again, pull this off. There we go. Also, let's move this out of the way and see if I can get it down in time. Pray for me. Hoorah. Okay. So there is that. I am so happy. I'm only going to show you one of these in interest of making sure that the first draft of this video was half an hour long and just I'll be really successful if I can come in at maybe 20 minutes. And that way, if you guys have the time uh, signatures of what I mean, time signature, because this is music. Anyway, if you have the timestamps of what I'm working with, then maybe you'll be able to see what you want to see. Unless you're just watching this to hang out with me, in which case, thank you for hanging out with me today. So I'm going to show you my reverse stamping procedure. This is plate Nicole Diary 156. Here's a red maple leaf. I think I am not a biologist. And I'm not a dendrochronologist, which means I don't examine tree rings. Also... I would love it if I could find my other stamping polish. Here we go. This one came in October's Maniology Manny by Me box. It's called Cozy. You can use whatever color you want that's going to stand out against that base bottom color because that's where it's going to go. All right. So after I put just a little on, then I do that, and then I do that, and then I show you what happened which means I have a successful stamp. Again, some people use uh, lint rollers to grab off the excess. I always like to use scotch tape because it's so much easy to direct in small scale, all right? So, first thing I do is, although I use Wet n Wild Clear Nail Protector for my decals and reverse stamping, it looks like this. I get it for a dollar at Dollar Tree. It comes in bubble packs mostly. I also find it places that carry Wet n Wild, but I'm really it's really hard to find Wet n Wild anymore. I don't know if you guys are experiencing the same thing. So first layer is this. And then anything I don't get with the first sweep, I make sure that I don't overlap those two sweeps because otherwise it's probably gonna pull up the stamp. It's just gonna melt away right there. So anyway, we wait for this to dry. Then we start filling in the color with our, so I did kind of ombres. Let me show you what I've done here. So you can look up what they actually look like on television, I mean on television, on the internet. But I've just done some fun colors here. You could also do, you know, if you're doing your own design of this particular manicure, you could do um, you know, fantastical colors. You don't have to stay to fall colors. The, your imagination is your only limitation. So anyway, I have, you'll, you can see how here I've applied the different colors and I use detail brushes like this. And um, some people use dotting tools. They, that doesn't work up for, out for me. And then over that, so to, to, to be clear, once this dries, I do two separate coats of the clear nail protector from Wet n Wild so that if I mess up and get outside the lines a little bit anywhere, then I can grab a detail brush with a tiny bit of acetone and it won't eat into my stamper. I, I have some, you know, uh, 
well, wiggle room, I guess, that I've created with those extra coats of clear coat. So anyway, two stages of the end of the stamp. Let's say you've filled it in and you're done. You go ahead and let it dry and then you put one coat of clear nail protector on top. And then, especially if you're stamping over a dark color, unless I'm stamping on white, I tend to back all my reverse stamping with white. You wanna be really careful and you wanna get in the lines, but um, I find that it's a great standard practice. So now that I have a dry stamp, how am I gonna get it on my nail? I'm glad you asked. So there are a couple different ways. You can use an official sticky base coat. This is the one I'm currently recommending. It's called Double Bond. It's by Vibrant Vinyls. It's wonderful. It comes in a bunch of different scents. This That particular one is Mermaid Lemonade. I had the opportunity to swatch for her a couple months back and that was a lot of fun. So also, let's say you're really trying to, you know, keep your expenses low. This is LA Colors Base Coat Top Coat. It's available at Family Dollar. It's available at Dollar Tree. It's available at a lot of different places. Uh, I buy at Dollar Tree where it's a dollar. It's a terrible top coat, absolutely horrible. Would never recommend it. I hate it, but it stays tacky for enough time that it's really helpful as a sticky base coat for decal application or reverse stamping. So first thing you do, I put a little bit too much on there because I was trying to show you that you want to cover a little more room than you think you're gonna because, oops, than you think you need to because, sorry, I've got, looks like my placemat is kind of slanted so every, my polishes are all going down the hill. Anyway, so look here. It, so we're not just sticking down the leaf. We're actually wanting to make sure that we take care of whatever is around it to its perimeter. So you line up the stem with where the pendant is and then you roll back and forth. If you're using one of these square stamp, rectangular stampers, we really wanna make sure that everything is really seriously dry because when you're stamping on here and you're rolling this little edge, if, if you have not dry polish that hasn't really set, it's just gonna put a bar right in your polish. So make sure that you're dealing with a really dry situation. And then you see how I've got some room around here that's not quite translucent. It's got that opaque look. So what I do is I grab my cleanup brush. You can use a detail brush if you want, but I put a little acetone on my cleanup brush and very carefully. This is why we, I usually top coat in between my stamping and my uh, application of reverse stamps. So we're just making sure that that dry decal perimeter sticks to the actual, oops, I just lost a nail. Isn't that embarrassing? It fell off because I put on a bunch of top coat before I put on my nail glue. I'm gonna come right back to you guys. Anyway, if I'm gonna be wearing a set for only half an hour or so, then I, I don't uh, glue it right to my nail. I put some top coats on there first so that I'm not harming my nail when I pull it off. So if you have any questions about my reverse stamping procedure or applying it, do ask me um, in the comments below, or you can check out my other videos. I have a tips and tricks of reverse stamping or decals. I don't remember the exact um, title, but I will link it in the description box below so that you guys can see a video that is actually dedicated to that. And then we're gonna put on our top coat. Yet again, I'm using such feet. If you're worried about smearing, you can use a little aerosol hairspray held back at a distance. I didn't believe that tip, but I swear it is it has it's been awesome. So here we have our finished product. And to finish this video, I'm gonna put on the other 
set of nails, the original set of nails, and I'm going to go through the plates that I used in designing this with you. Um, if I've left anything vague, uh, please, you know, again, ask me below. Uh, I hope you liked my design. Oh, you know what? I left out the easiest part, so don't go anywhere. So there's a leaf that needs to be on the front of the, I mean, the index finger. And there's a leaf, and it's from Creative Shop, Creative Shop Stamping. So I'm going to put on that leaf because, well, you know, why not? But you guys probably know this part of stamping, right? Where's my gold? Where is my gold? Okay. Well, oh, it's hiding. Okay. So I'm going to grab this. Those are pretty fine lines, so I think I applied enough. All right, so I'm gonna grab anything that's extra that's gonna mess up my shape on the nail. So I grab the extra and I'm gonna position it just right so that I wanna see the pretty bits of that leaf. I wanna see the way that that leaf is shaped. And then I make sure that it's all applying and voila, isn't that lovely? I love that one. All right, and then the end of the manicure is the thumb. And I don't know if I really have to show you the thumb because I just showed you how I do basic stamping and the thumb is basic stamping. So we're gonna grab some of our leaf shapes and we're just gonna fill up the thumb. As I've done here, Oop. let's focus. All right, so I did that there, and here's the way I did it on this nail. So that'll give you a general idea of what we're trying to do on the thumb. And that is the final nail of my design because the pinky nail is just the darker of the two gradients that you've done. I mean, of the two colors in the gradient, it's just the darker one. So once again, we're going to use either a lint roller or, as I prefer, scotch tape to pull that stamping off and any little extra bits of polish so that we don't have a messy shape. And then we're going to stamp it. And then once that nail is full, you're going to top coat and then you actually are done with the manicure. So now I'm going to cut to where I change nails and show you the plates. But thank you so much for visiting me today, and here you go. Ta-da! So there is the way the finished manicure looks. You can probably tell that I use different polishes um, as far as inside the leaves go. Also, I'm just going to run through these plates. Info will be down below. Once again, this is URSO4, lots of fall leaves, some silhouettes, some outlines. Uh, this is a newer one. This is Nicole Diary 156. This has a great, I guess, red maple leaf. And then some other really fun. I've, I've used most of these in manicure so far. I'm really a fan of, fan of that plate. We've got a PY... Y007 with some outlines and some silhouettes. We also got BP191, which is mostly about Thanksgiving. I don't know why that ham hock is there, because, you know, Thanksgiving. I don't know. Anyway, so there's that big, is that a sugar maple? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know leaves. Anyway, so those are the two outlines I used um, on my, on these nails right here. Anyway, so What's Up Nails is the one that has all those outlines. That's B053. I already told you about the Mesardu plate that I used for my chandelier images. I told you about the Creative Shop plate that I used for the leaf veining. 
on the index finger and these outlines and a bunch of other really awesome fall images are on B033 of What's Up Nails info below. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for coming um, and spending some time with me today. I will see you guys pretty soon with the review. I have some uh, swatches to do for a line that's coming out uh, in a couple months, uh, but other uh, maybe so maybe three days or so you'll see me with a review. Uh, I hope that you enjoy. Please uh, thumbs up, you know, comment, subscribe, that whole rigamarole. And I will see you guys soon.